So one of the things that I talk about a lot is uh, finding people that you disagree with the most and yet still respect. And I think you have a long history of that. You have people on your, your show that regularly, every week that you disagree with, but you still bring them on and you still speak to them uh, respectfully. When did you get started in this world? And, and like, uh, how's that going now, now that we're living in a more divisive world? Well, my background outside of being in music radio, which is where I started here in St. Louis at this little tiny radio station. I went to the University of Missouri. My dad cut a deal with me. He knew I wanted to go into radio. He said, that's fine, but you have to go to college. So I went to Mizzou. I got a journalism degree. So I always sort of approached, even when I went into talk radio, I was a news director in Columbia. Uh, I started doing talk and I approached it more with a news sensibility. So the reputation I spent almost 10 years at WTMJ in Milwaukee, which is another heritage radio station. I know that one. Yeah, sure. And I had the reputation up there for being, you know, people knew what my politics were, libertarian, conservative, but I, I approached the other side with fairness. I had great relationships with, um, with most people who were elected who were Democrats. Tom Barrett, who's the um, mayor of Milwaukee right now was my congressman. I knew him very well. You know, we disagreed. I'll use an example here in Missouri, Senator McCaskill. Senator McCaskill and I disagreed on many, many things, but I liked her. Some of my listeners did not um, appreciate this. I I genuinely liked her. I say liked because there's been a little bit of a turn in that recently since she left office. I still like her, but I, I question a couple of the things that she's doing right now. But we we had a great relationship and, and the bond was black and gold because we both went to Mizzou. So I remember embracing Senator McCaskill when Mizzou came back the last game they played KU at uh, Mizzou arena. And we were so thrilled because it was an amazing comeback, but we, you know, we've knocked heads on politics, but she would come on. We'd be respectful. Uh, Congressman Clay is another one, you know, have a great relationship with him. Most of the people on the other side, I have had, good relationships with over the years. I think that's important because why can't you have conversations? Where we're at though is that a lot of people on the far right don't want to hear anything from anyone. Senator McCaskill is a good example of this, Vance, because I had listeners that repeatedly would tell me, she's a kooky lefty, she's a nutty, you know, Democrat, blah, blah, blah. Because everything in politics is also local, Senator McCaskill's not like Senator Durbin in Illinois or um, Senator Schumer. Her votes were certainly along party lines. She's a Democrat, but she wasn't as extreme as those Democrats who represented other states. Republicans are the same way. So, you know, I think it's important to have those conversations. We do something on my show on Fridays called the Reardon Roundtable. It was set up um, and inspired more than 20 years ago by Bill Maher's first show, Politically Incorrect, where he had people on the left and right, I serve, uh, you know, as the moderator and host, but I'm, I'm on the right. I got someone else that comes on. We have two people on the left and we toss around the issues. Um, it gets, you know, intense. Sometimes it might get heated, but we always walk away and we're friends. I've had some people come on the round table over the years and it's got angry and difficult. We, those people don't come back. So it's sort of been what I've been about, you know, for, for my entire radio career. I think it's important to have those conversations with people And it gets well, and those are the only conversations where anything new comes out of it, right? Like, if you just have people on that already agree with you, there's no chance that you guys will unearth something new and important or or grab some new great idea because the the newness comes from things clashing together and you saying, Ah, that's something I really hadn't considered before, and I'm gonna go implement it. But when it becomes completely partisan, like for the sake of being partisan. There's, there's uh, very little, little point in uh, even getting together to talk. Well, it's all, you know, we all have confirmation bias and that's been put on steroids. So I think a lot of people don't want to hear what another perspective is. People ask me a lot, you know, what my favorite websites are. And let me toss one out there for people who want to be, you know, thinking people politically about issues. And it's called realclearpolitics.com started off as a polling site in 1999 for the 2000 election. Carl Cannon, whose father, Lou, is a legendary Washington journalist, and uh, some other folks put it together. And now it's a compendium, basically. If you go to realclearpolitics.com, on the top of the page, you'll see an article that says, you know, climate change is causing all the wildfires in California, death and destruction. You know, we got to do something about it. Then right underneath that, there's a story that says, look, 
This is not driven by climate change. It's, there's other issues and this is all alarmism. So there's a lot of balance in the opinion pieces that they put up. There's a bunch of audio. They also have different divisions like Real Clear Science and Real Clear Sports. It's just a great, you know, it's a great spot to go to read different opinions from different people. So I always recommend that. I think different opinions are important. You know, I think a lot of people who listen to me assume my position is one way because they assume where I am politically because I follow Rush Limbaugh and I'm a conservative talk show host. I will tell you right now that I was, um, I'll use gay marriage as an issue. I was for gay marriage long before Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and most Democrats because I had relationships in the 1980s with um, friends of mine, mentors who were gay. I don't give a rip. I never have. I never have. And that's an area, you know, that I've maybe had some differences with people in the past that are conservative or on the right. I think that's evolved as well. But those are important perspectives. You know, I mentioned the no-knock warrants. Um, a lot of conservatives, a lot of people on the right would support that. Police would support that. We need the element of surprise. I, I, I think that that goes too far, and I'm coming down on my libertarian streak on that. Um, you know, drugs is another one where uh, the, the war on drugs is something that I firmly believe is a complete failure. I've been for decriminalization, legalization of marijuana for decades, you know, decades. So my positions on, on all these issues aren't just, you know, check the boxes off for the conservative or the Republican side. I, I like to tackle these issues and give people something to think about maybe that they haven't thought about. It's hard to do, but, but I'm hoping there's some people out there paying attention. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you're interested in conversations like this, you might want to join the Articulate Ventures Network. There were a patchwork of thinkers looking to explore different ideas, having our ideas respectfully challenged, and figuring out different ways of looking at the world. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures.